Welcome back to the 10 Podcast. I am your host, Robert Grill, and I'm sitting in the Kangan Motorsports Studio, and I have my host, Adam Nielsen, on Zoom because he got me sick, and I don't want to get him sick. I don't think that's true, Robbie. I'm still um, convinced that this is this is like PRI flu stuff. No. So, true or false? Mm-hmm. Last week, Tuesday, you were homesick. So, last week, no, two weeks ago now, Friday... I was home because I worked overnight, but I started getting sick. Yes. Saturday and Sunday, I was feeling pretty shitty. Monday, I went to work and felt really crappy the whole day, but stuck it out because I was working by myself, and so it wasn't that big a deal. But then Tuesday, I woke up still feeling pretty shitty, and I was supposed to be with some coworkers doing some other shit that day. So instead of getting them sick, I stayed home. So that was Tuesday. Wednesday, I woke up fine. Okay. So Tuesday, you were sick. Your child was sick all week, the week before. Yep. And then Friday, I drive to your house, pile you and your entire family into the Petri dish. That is my pickup. You say that like there's a bunch of us. There's three of you. You you outnumber me. You outnumber me three to one. There's three and a half, Robbie. Oh, yeah. You outnumber me three and a half to one. (laughs) And then I breathe the germs from your your child's sticky fingers touching everything in my truck and I was sick by Sunday night and then I was I violently sick on Wednesday and I've been I don't be- think it was me I don't know I I honestly don't know where it came from I felt it coming on Saturday night as I was laying in my trailer and I'm like I can feel it in my throat I'm getting sick but well, then I, there's I, like everybody else at the at grid light or all of our buddies are like, yeah, my my such and such is sick and yeah. such and my girlfriend's sick. My mom is sick. My coworkers sick. And here you are trying to blame it on me. No, Windows, I don't want to reboot right now. <laughs> now is not a good time. Jesus Christ. But yeah, I, I felt it coming on Saturday night and I kind of chalked it up to being like, ah, you know, maybe, you know, it's kind of cold out. And if you got tired. it by Saturday, it definitely didn't come from me. Yeah, Saturday night, I think I kind of felt it coming on, and then it doesn't hit you that fast. Well, it it, it hit me on Tuesday. Like I, I could slowly feel it coming on, like fluid in my ears, oh, like yeah. feeling okay. And then I, Wednesday morning, I woke up and I'm like, I'm dying. I'm I I'm properly it. sick. Yeah. So it's like the, yeah, yeah it's I get like, it. It's all in my head. Like it's not COVID. We, I, you know, it's it's just a head cold. But it's been so yep. long since I've had a bad head cold that I had forgotten how bad a head cold can be. So it's all like the fluid in the ears, the congestion. I got the, we we have matching voices. It's super fun. You guys running down my throat is one of my favorite things in the whole world. I love it so much. The best. And I, I, I you know how I said I hope everyone that gets sick and they go to public wear masks. I did that. I followed through on my. my I'm so proud of you. I followed through on my promise. Anytime I went anywhere, this week didn't matter. Master or not, I wore one. I was the guy. Boy, I was not about to spread my sickness to all the other humans. Are you that guy who's driving down the road by yourself with a mask on? No, no, no. If I'm alone, mask off. All right, that's fair. But we should apparently we should have done that on the way to grid life. I would I would have incessantly <laughs> made fun of you for driving down the road by yourself with no, a mask no, that's, on that's because crazy. that's just out of control. That's craziness. I'm not protecting people. Can't be like, oh, I just been wearing it so much, you don't even notice it. Bullshit. Nah, not when you're by yourself. Call, call it shenanigans. I've no. been wearing glasses every day for like over a year now. <laughs> I fucking notice them every second of every day. Yep. No, I can't I, go without them. Don't get me wrong. But. No, I'm not buying that valve. Apparently, I should have wore it all day Friday and all day Sunday. You didn't get it from me, or I got it from you. You are the patient zero, and I am, I am the one that got it. Nah, bro. Anyways, welcome to the sick podcast. We are sick. Oh, it's so sick. We are bro. sick with two Ks, not thick with two. Cs. At least, yeah. At least two Ks. Two Ks. Sick. You gotta go straight to four Ks, though. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's, you, you jump straight to four, straight to <laughs> yeah, four or more, for sure, or more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. any number after that yeah. is fine. More, but, more of them. Yeah, we're yeah. sick. This is a sick yeah. podcast. Um, where do we want to start? Do you want, before we get started, I remind everybody to head over to TechBossCompany dot com, T E K B O S S Company dot com. Uh, they have scooters, electric scooters, and pit bikes, and all sorts of fun stuff, which we will get into later. That we really didn't get to utilize all that much. But there is the sweet picture of Dalton rocking his um, Uber Scoot that he had this weekend, looking fly. Oh, it's one of my favorite. He looks so dumb. I love it so much. Why does he look dumb? He looks great. 
I don't know. I just looked it's it It's so convenient. I. It is so convenient. Kind of like, a, we'll, we'll do a little pre-foreshadowing without really telling the story. But like, we went to Road America this weekend, and apparently they're, like, way against anything that's not street legal. So, like, no, skateboards no, with, no they scooters. Call skateboards with sticks. Yeah, which is weird. Because they're boomers. Yep. So, apparently, scooters like a no-no, but they kind of look the other way for a while. And I don't know why you wouldn't allow it, because it's so big. It's so big, Robbie. And, and, and driving around on my uh, little scooter to get to, like, turn three or any turn to see things was necessary. And There's I, a full mile, maybe a little more, between the last turn and the first it's one. It's 1.1 miles. That's dumb. That's so long. You need a scooter. I don't, I don't think PPIR is that long total. total. No, it's a. It's a. <laughs> I don't think it is either. But yeah, be, having to get anywhere this weekend was super convenient. Having these scooters, seriously, if I did, if I couldn't yeah. use them, I wouldn't have gone anywhere. I would have just like, no, nah, I'm just I'm just gonna stay in my trailer. I'll walk over there for a little bit, and I'll go right back to my trailer. I'm not. I got places to be. I, got, I can't go all the way to turn three and then come back and get my car ready. That's, that's not enough we time. Used- we used significant, or we went significantly fewer places on Sunday than we did on Saturday. So that's yep. for sure. Yep. Yeah. So if you want your scooter for when you go to the track, especially a big track, um, head over to techbosscompany dot com t e k b o s s company dot com. Uh, use code ten tens podcast get ten uh, percent off your scooter, or pit bike, or uh, electric dirt bike, or go kart, or any other fun things they have in stock. That's uh, techbosscompany dot com. Boom. Heck yeah. Should we open it up, Robbie? Yeah, let's open it up. What do you got? I have a real opener for once. That's good. I think it's been a minute. I don't even know. It's yeah. been a minute since we've recorded, period. It's been too long. Uh, two weeks, Robbie. Yeah, because this is like basically the end of the second week. We missed two weeks. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. We missed yes, one we week. We, we, missed, no. we missed a week, did a week, missed a week. Yeah, we did. No, we missed two weeks in a row, Robbie. No, we didn't. I think we did, though. No, we're good. We it's fine. We only missed one. <laughs> it's all, we only missed one. It's fine. Okay. I mean, we missed we missed wrong, two out we missed okay. two out of three. But oh, we've we, consistently become every other week. Yeah, I don't like that. We'll fix that now that life is slightly less busy. I say that, but yeah, right. <laughs> it should That's be less busy, but works. it's not. It's busy. It's, it's busy. not. It's been crazy busy. Heck, even the, the racing has not been the busy part of my schedule, Robbie. Nope, that's been the easy part. Yeah. So, anyway, let's open this up. Heck yeah. So, this is a really old Jalopnik article. We know everyone, long-time listeners of the show know how much we love Jalopnik it's the, articles. It's the pinnacle of journalism. Yeah. Uh, but I still enjoy doing some of these things. They They put out one quite some time ago called The Cars You're Embarrassed. To admit that you love, and I think that they do like a poll, so they probably polled a bunch of people and then grabbed the like most common ones, and so there's a small list of them below. Okay. Uh, I have a sneaking suspicion. It's been a really long time since this, is, this article was posted in April. I have not scrolled through it since then, if at all. I can't even honestly remember if I did or not, but I have a sneaking suspicion that a lot of the cars on this list Robbie does not love. Yeah, probably. And a lot of these cars on this list I probably do love. Just because that's if, how things go. For if us. they're new cars, I could see it going either way. If they're older cars, I think you're 100 percent right. Well, the first one, I guess, it depends on what you define as being old. The yeah. first one on here, the Audi TT, they specifically talk about the first gen of TT in here, uh, which I kind of, I mean, I feel like that's kind of old at this point, isn't it? It's almost 25 years, ain't it? They were released in '99. Yeah, you're getting there. You can almost yeah. you could almost import them. Yeah. So buy it a drink. This guy talks about how uh he always thought that the first gen was amazing inside and out and would age extremely well. Who said that? The guy who suggested it. Yeah. I think the design <laughs> has aged well, Robbie. It's a it's aged. The design okay. has aged well. The mechanics not well. Maybe less so. But the design has aged well. Yeah, I mean, because the I mean the Volkswagen Beetle's been popular for like a hundred oh, years. So yeah, I guess it 
It aids better than the Beetle, and people love that. I don't know why. It's a terrible car. It's safe, I guess? I, I don't know. I don't think it is. The new one is, I think. The new one's ish, but like so the old allegedly. ones. Allegedly. The old one's got the same suspension design as the Corvair that's allegedly not unsafe at any speed. Yeah, that's probably not the safe one. So, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, that's... Yeah, there's no secret that you love the Audi TT, and I... I, I Love's not, a I, strong word to describe my feeling. Yeah, and it's, I, it's hard, man. I don't dislike it. I wouldn't buy one. But at the same time, if it pops up on Marketplace and the guy's like, $1,500, and I'm like... I mean, you're well, going to click on it. I don't dislike it for that $1,500. You're going to click on it, and you're probably going to send it to me. Oh, yeah, every time. Adam, there's this yellow one for $1,500. Oh, what are God. you doing with your life? I would buy a yellow one for $1,500. I didn't know that they made yellow ones uh, with the 1.8 in them until somewhat recently. Yep. I thought they only came as the the V6 version, which still kind of has held its value because they're rare, right. but also are all automatics here in the U.S. Oh, well, that's too bad. Which is kind of a buzzkill. Yeah, so. it needs to be a manual. <laughs> Yeah, the next one up, a car I don't really particularly have any feeling one way or the other for. The Cadillac ELR. Is that, that's a two-door, right? Yes. yes. So I think that the Cadillac ELR is a Chevy Volt. Oh. I'm, I'm seeing a picture of it, and I'm just going CTSV. No, it's an up-badged Chevy Volt. Oh. So it's it's like Prius sized, uh, yeah. Because it but, looks it looks big, but luxury looks, and much better. Have I never seen this before? There's a very real possibility that you either a have never seen one, or b have not realized you did. That's fair. They sold really poorly. You don't say. And, and I, that's a car that I would notice in the wild, and I can only think of two times I've seen one. And I'm pretty sure they were the same one. Okay. It's a weird so, car. Um, gun to my head. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. It's weird. Like I, it's super you know, weird. In its, uh, it's way too, it was way too, too much money brand new. They were crazy money brand new. Like 60K? I don't remember. But in its category, it's probably the best one. Okay. It's yeah. category meaning Priuses and Volts. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, we're really setting the bar high here. I know. <laughs> but who would uh, who would drive a Volt anyways? I would take a Volt over a Prius. Nah, I'd take the Toyota just because it's no Toyota. way, dude. It's so ugly. And I, I didn't say it wasn't ugly. I'm just saying I nah, would take bro. the Toyota. I would take the Toyota. So the Volt uh, is an electric car with a uh, gas engine or a gas generator essentially whereas the Prius is a gas car with an electric assist right so the Volt is more the way that I think of hybrid cars making more sense to me yeah yeah I can see that because I think that a generator charging a battery bank in my head with no like real scientific reasoning behind it in my head, that's a more efficient way of making that power than using a battery bank uh, in tandem with an engine that drives the wheels. Yeah, I can see that logic. I don't, I don't know if it like, plays out that way in reality, but yeah, I, I no, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I do, but like, I see what you're saying. And yes, you I know, do. I have a generator that I use almost daily at work and it shocks me how, Fuel efficient it can be, the one that I have. Right. I have one of those newer power inverter style ones that's uh it's like a predator, but it's made by Cummins. Uh and it's still gas powered though. It's not diesel. Okay. But um it's not cheap, but it's really good. Like it's way better on gas than a predator of a, of similar output, it seems. And the predators do pretty good. I mean, I'm always surprised yeah. at how little gas we pour into that thing over a weekend. Well, so my Cummins is a 4,500 watt instead of 3,500 watt like most people's Predators are. Yep. And I can easily run 12 to 15 hours with my air conditioner and some light drain. Oh, wow. Like lighting inside of my um, – whereas like Dalton's Predator running what I'm pretty sure is the same uh, air conditioner will die in uh, – 
between the time we go to bed and the time we wake up at grid life. Yeah, that's true. And you, yeah, I guess which you generally speaking is less than eight hours. Most likely, yes. Yeah, I don't but, know how long in that run, range it actually runs, but it's usually dead when we wake up. Yeah, but that's because you guys usually top it off right before you start drinking. No, not, we not top you. it off before we go to bed. No, because they always forget because they're drinking. No, because I always top it off before we go to bed. Right? Okay, yeah, you're not giving me enough credit. You'll remember. Uh, they and drunk, even drunk Dalton really gets cranky about it being hot. That's true. And this is providing his comfort, so he'll make sure. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's just in my head that makes more sense. I don't. I don't know if it's true or not. Yeah, because so. the Prius seems to get better mileage. I think, or does? I have no idea. I can't remember now. I'm sure I'm wrong. Now that I mentioned, now that I said Part it out loud, clue. I'm I'm probably backwards. But yeah, um, yeah. I think I, if I had to choose love or hate, I would go a little towards the love on this one. Can't explain why. I don't hate it. No. I'm not going to run out and buy one. I wouldn't pay good American hard-earned dollars for it, but I... No, but like... <laughs> I'd drive I mean, it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell you no if you're like, hey, man, you want to drive this thing for a week? See how you feel about it? I'd be like, yeah, that sounds yeah, yeah, I'll awesome. Drive I'll drive that. I'm super into that idea. Let's do it. How good is it on gravel? We're going to find out. <laughs> yeah. So God, next funny. up, uh, the Saturn Sky. Uh, car, car I'm not embarrassed about that at all. It's, I don't, it's amazing. Honestly... This car, despite the fact that I think the Solstice is the better one, and I realize that almost nobody agrees with me. Correct. Uh, but I don't think this car belongs on this list. Not at all. If you're embarrassed to like the the Sky, there's something wrong because that, that's a great car. Yeah, both of them were good cars. There's nothing. I think like I can't. I'd rather have these than a Miata of the similar generation. The only I actually really, I really like the NC. I have nothing against the NC, right? Uh, but I'd take one of these in a heartbeat over that. The only reason I w- would have to argue with that is because the aftermarket for the Miata would be better. Oh yeah. The aftermarket availability for these. That's the, that's the, that's sucks. the only argument I have against it. Other than that, I prefer the sky all day. Long. You want to know, you want to know why these are great. There's lots of reasons why they're great. The most so the a V an LS will practically drop right in there. Yep. The transmission that's behind it came out of uh, the Colorado, which had an LS bolted to it. Yep. So you don't have to change out the transmission. It'll handle it as long as you don't get too crazy. And the rear differential is CTSV. Yeah. It was so made to be swapped. So it'll handle it too, Rob. I can't believe it's not more popular. I remember it's when like they first the came out. It's like the easiest thing in the world. Uh, yeah, I think in Sioux Falls, they had multiple people order these brand new yeah. and swap them at the dealership. I think, I think I'm, Billions I remember, actually did the swap. This was one of the first cars that I remember being a car that, um, was kind of hard to get when it first came out that, um, that they were being delivered. They were sold before they were delivered. Yes. Uh, and my parents bought a Solstice in 2006, which was the first year you could get them. Uh, and it was it was at a dealership in Storm Lake, Iowa, I think. We were driving home from somewhere doing something. I don't remember what. And it was sitting outside the dealership. And we drove by, stopped, and looked at it. And, uh, yeah, I guess somebody had ordered it, backed out on purchasing it. And then so they're like, yeah, not a problem. Uh, we'll just put it on the lot. Yeah, it'll consider <laughs> consider it fine, and then we ended up with it instead. So, um, first year the 06, all manuals, but all two point four liter naturally aspirated cars. Whereas later in life, you could get them with two liter turbos, uh, which is what came in like the Cobalt SSs. But also, unfortunately, you could get them with automatic transmissions behind them. Ugh, gross. And now, if you want to buy one. Good They're luck. all either automatic or salvage title. There's nothing in between. Nope. There is no clean manual <laughs> transmissions out there. None. It's so dumb. It amazes me how many of these were totaled. Half of them. Had to <laughs> Literally be. half it's of crazy. them. It's crazy. There's, there's, I wonder if there's like, if there's something about them uh, that was expensive to repair. Yeah. Or maybe people just drove like so assholes. Like, well, Which, yeah, I mean, I would sure. too. I mean, I'm not making fun of anyone that would do that because I would, I would do the same thing. 
I never drove a turbo one, but the naturally aspirated one was kind of like the Miata where it feels fast and fun, but it doesn't make enough power to actually get you in any real trouble. Yeah. I mean, Luke had that, uh, that yellow one at, at Heartland Park for uh, grid life. Yeah. I mean, he, he was putting pretty, he was, he was decently quick in it and it looked like a yeah, lot of he fun. Was, he was trying to get me to get behind the seat or get behind the wheel of that car. And I was like, "You're a you're a bad person." He's hurt. Yeah, that's a that's like giving an addict some heroin. Just you're a like bad handing, handing it right to you. I've never met you before, <laughs> and you seem like a nice guy. Super but nice you're a guy. Bad person. Yep. Super nice guy. But yeah. Uh, yeah. What I mean, what type of jerk goes to somebody that you know knows they like the car, know they like driving? It says, was yellow. Here, drive this it was on a track. Yellow GXP. With some light modifications and a GM performance tune. Yep, and what it was gr- it was great on track. He drove. He was wheeling it. I think that's a street class grid life underdog. Uh, yeah, I I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, super cool. Not embarrassed one one bit. I don't. That's not a car you should be embarrassed by. I don't. I don't. I I firmly believe that car does not belong in this list. That or its its sister car, the Solstice, Agreed. do not belong on this list. Nope, not at all in any way, shape, or form. So, uh, next, the Jaguar S Type R. What? Why would that be? Embarrassing? People love Jags. Yeah. Is there something wrong with this one? I'm not a, Jag a lot of guy. people really hated them. But it looks like all the I other. I think Jags. that they were good cars. You mean like all the other st- Jags? But that's never stopped people from loving Jaguars. <laughs> yeah, I so. No, it was a terrible car. It broke down a lot. Yeah. And right. they all did. You mean like all the, the legendary reliability of that V12 <laughs> from the earlier, huh? That's what it is. Ask, ask Booney how his turned out. <laughs> is it still sitting in front of Factor Fest? No, it's gone. It's He got rid of it. Oh, he did? It's gone, gone, man. Oh, sad face. Yeah. So, yeah, clearly that's... They probably didn't even pay for the gas to go get the NPO one. I have no idea what because they're, they're not worth anything anymore. I don't think. I think that's what it came down to. It wasn't worth fixing it. Yeah, that's a bummer. Well, what's the difference between gone. this one? This one looks like all the others. It's just a newer one. Yeah. Is that just because uh, Jag people hate this new was things? The, I think this was the Ford era uh, when Ford was owned by or when Jaguar was owned by Ford. Okay. Um, and I don't really know enough about them to talk too much about it, but I don't think it was a loved era. I don't think that they did especially good uh making jags but uh the v8 that's in them i think was kind of like an early derivative of the coyote and uh, like i don't think it's the worst motor in the world they're just not like the best car and i don't i i'm not i'm I'm too young to drive it i can't decide if i like it i don't hate it i feel i'm not embarrassed to admit that i kind of i'd be okay with it like i need to drive it though you know yeah maybe it's just the worst Maybe it's from the outside looking in, I think that I would love it. I, th- I think it'd be nice. It could be all right. As long as I don't have to maintain it. I think it would be just like my Audi where yeah. it's totally mean to me. And like 85% of the time, I fucking hate this car. <laughs> yes. But like that other 15% when everything's just clicking and it runs really well, it makes it all worth it. Yeah. I, Which yeah. is kind of racing and owning dumb cars in a nutshell. And I've definitely steered full into that <laughs> as I've gotten older. I know I've I know I've flip flopped yeah, on cha- that. You've changed, I've, Robbie. I have certainly changed and flip flopped on that. Changed a my, lot. <laughs> yeah, people grow, man. It's fine. Or, or they say you're a different person every seven years, oh. and we, you know we're well into year five here. Yeah, we're basically different people. So I mean, yeah, I, I either fine. grew or regressed, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, it's. I'm different. Let's go with changed. Changed. That's a positive. It's neither story. positive nor negative. It's just change. That's fair. They say change is good, Robbie. They say that. Yes. <laughs> I'm. I'm. I'm in on the change. Yeah. Uh, I. W- so. I guess I'm. I'll say that I'm. I'm embarrassed that I like this Jag. How about that? That's fair. <laughs> uh, next up, the Buick Cascada, which is Buick's little two-door convertible. Uh, rebadged opal yeah. thing. Did they yeah. even actually sell this car? I've never seen one. I've seen uh, pictures. I think it's kind of like a cross, a Murano cross cabriolet, but smaller. No, like uh, that's how many of them they sold. Oh, like a thousand like in the world. They exist, 
And when you see them, you're like, holy shit, that's that's one of those. But they're not very they're pretty few and far between. And honestly, I think if the roof was up, because I believe they're hard tops. Oh. They're fully hard tops. So if the roof is up, I don't think you'd really even notice it from any other car in traffic. Yeah, because it's just a it's just a it's not like Buick. the Murano where it's like remarkably weird. <laughs> even with the roof. It's up. the weirdest car in the world. <laughs> you want to talk about a car that I'm embarrassed that I like. No way, Robbie. I would never buy one. Don't say that. I would Robbie. never buy one. You know what? I am but, ending this meeting. Bye. But, but when I when I'm I, out of here, man. I if I see one, that. if I see one driving by, it puts me in a good mood because it is that terrible. I've made a lot. I of, love like, it because it's terrible. I've made a lot of like undefendable statements. That's that's right up there. I admit that's that. got to be one of the highest. That's that should be on the list of cars I'm embarrassed that I like. Would never own. Probably would never drive. But for some reason, I like it. Hmm. Uh, this car, though, this boring little. I don't. It's a four seater. I don't. Hate but it's how the it size looks. of a two seater. I don't hate how it looks. I I I do. It's fine. It's awful. It's fine. No, there's so much wrong. I mean, what they could have, what they could have given us as a convertible could have been much worse, because I think it's like roughly, like cruise sized. Yeah. They could have given us a two door convertible cruise with a Buick badge on the front of it, and that would have been god awful, Robbie. It all, to me, it's almost like the size of a Veloster, and then it's, yeah, it's, it's and, Veloster and, and sized. It's a, it's a Veloster convertible. A Veloster convertible would not be good. No, and that's what this is to me. This looks somebody, to somebody makes an FRS BRZ convertible, oh, and weird. it looks really, really good. Weird. It works really, really well. I, I can see that. Yeah, I mean the, the, the shape of that this car because it's kind of like an S two thousand. You need that long nose, yeah, kind of like that short rear end to kind of like make yeah. that work. This doesn't have that. It's just this is like better a, than what a Veloster would look like as a convertible, though. Barely to me, it looks the Come same. Come on, like it's, it's hot garbage. At least the doors are probably the same length. Yeah, yeah, probably. Would that really upset you if the doors were still different lengths on the Veloster convertible? <laughs> of course, they're different. They was no, there's no way they'd be the same. They probably still have three. Veloster convertible. It's a Veloster convertible with three fucking doors. <laughs> well, someone should <laughs> chop top challenge a Veloster. <laughs> that would be the best. They're cheap now. There was somebody in Des Moines selling one with a blown engine for like five hundred dollars. No, it was like uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, they're getting down there. And I was considering it. I was like, man, I could have a running and driving decent drop Veloster because like everything was oh, nice on it. Oh, Robbie, you can't. You've died on that hill, Robbie. You can't. Oh yeah, no, I would hate myself the whole time. You and then can't try to go flip back it. on that. You can't own a Veloster. I can own something I hate. No. Yes, I can. No, you've. I realize that we just talked about how much you've changed as a person. But that's too <laughs> far, Robbie. That's too far. I can't. Like, I there's can't. Certain things that I can never do because I've talked way too much shit on the podcast. And even if deep down inside I kind of want to, I can't do it now. <laughs> there's there's plenty of that. But no, the price That's was definitely where you're at on the on the, the velocity. The price was right, and then somewhere down, like further down marketplace, there was an engine for like next to nothing. And I was like, oh man, I could just, I could swap this in a weekend and have this running and be done for like oh two grand. God. I've <laughs> never been so confused. But I turn around and sell it, just like I did the That's GTO. Fair. Drive it for like a week and a half and sell it. Anyway, yeah, this is terrible. This if is- I have to land on love or hate, if I can't land in the middle. I probably would would uh, scoot towards the love side yeah, a Matt, little bit. This the yeah, Adam loves the Buick. I, I would hate. put Katie in that. How about that? As like a second car. Ugh. I don't know why you hate her so much. I mean, it's better than putting her in like a <laughs> Audi TT convertible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because that would actually get her from point A to point B. Probably, probably. It's a Buick. Well, it's an Opal. The GM, it's fine. So, the next car, I'm kind of interested, Robbie. Kind of oh. interested where you fall on this one. Yeah. Oh. The next one, the third gen Mitsubishi Eclipse. God, there is no redeeming quality to this car. Take take a car that was just like None. loved second gen yeah. Eclipse. People love that car. First gens were good too. First gens were fine. Not as good as the seconds. Nope. But it's still good cars. People love the second gen, and then you like they took the idea of the second gen, 
and then made every piece of it slightly worse. Everything. Everything's yeah. slightly worse. It looks worse in every angle. And that's the yeah. third gen. Yeah. The guy, has a, the guy who suggested this has an interesting... He says, uh, I bought one of these new in 2000, a bright red GT with a five-speed manual. The V6 sounded great with the stock exhaust. No, it didn't. The, the, <laughs> just, just put I that out in, there. No, it didn't. I was in, I was in uh, Ottumwa, which is kind of like one of the grungiest, grossest towns in Iowa. <laughs> That's really saying something. I'll, I'll say it, man. The place is a shithole. In, in a, sorry. If anybody who uh, listens to the show and lives in Ottumwa, first of all, you know you're you know I'm right. In a, in and secondly, a, don't at me, bro. In a, in a state that features Sioux City, Fort Dodge, and Storm Lake, and you pulled that out, Ottumwa I was a in shithole? Sioux City for two days this week and Ottumwa for one day this week. <laughs> and Ottumwa is a fucking shithole. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what to tell you, man. Place is garbage. <laughs> I was literally in the police department. We were putting fiber into the police department there. Yep, yep. And uh, I'm sure they need it. They're the, probably busy. Yeah, I was walking around with the IT guy, and I was like, "Man, it's pretty quiet in here." And he's like, "Yeah, like uh, even the sergeants aren't sitting at their desks. Like something must be going down." <laughs> <clears throat> and that whole place smelled heavily of weed. It's not a good sign when the police station smells as soon as you walk in. Yeah. They're, they must have had a real good haul here recently. I don't know. Yeah, get, it before anyway, it's, get it before it's uh, legal. There was some dude, some kid, ripping around the streets of Ottumwa with one of those with the exhaust cut off and driving it around like it was the fucking meanest race car on the planet. Yeah, that's and, how they drive them, yes. Oh, that's so how they all bad. drive them. If you if you drive yeah, a third, was, it third didn't sound clips, good. Nope. It was real garbage. Yep. So but I, this guy says he parted with his after eight years, mostly trouble free, uh, but it did have a voracious appetite for wheel bearings and one hundred and sixty five thousand miles. Once I could no longer get the hood to open. That's why he let it go. <laughs> Bit of a pig on the autocross course, but that only represented maybe three of its hundred and sixty five thousand miles. I bet with a little bit of mods, driving it is probably fine, just as long as you don't have to look at it. I've never seen somebody use these in a performance application series. I've seen a couple of people try, but not like you did the second gen. The second no, gen had so much, not. so much more support. Oh, for sure, it was much better looking, much better performing. It, yeah, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of first gens as drag cars. Yeah, first gens were popular too. So. Yeah, no, I. Yeah, I'm sitting on the hate. I'm gonna go with hate on this one too. Yeah, absolutely. So, next, I know where Robbie's on this one. Uh oh, the first gen Honda Insight, hot garbage, start to finish. Yeah, gross. There's only one way that you can make this good. How? And that is the answer to all things: case swap it. I have seen a case swapped one. So uh, one of the guys that runs Pro Awesome has a K-Swap Insight. And the, so they sell a bunch of parts for the swap. And it's glorious, Robbie. <laughs> um, I could, I could they're say super, that. Because they're super, super light. They're like. Yeah, they weigh next to nothing. And they get like a yeah, million I wanna say Yeah, like, I want to say that they're sub 2,000 pound stock. Probably, yeah. So I think uh, I think Eric could till daily one of these when he's not yeah, driving he his Riz line. And I, yeah, he I think does. it gets like a million miles to the gallon. Yeah. Which I, I but they have I a can, super I, low coefficient of drag. Yep, and can, so even with the K swap, it still gets like dumb mileage. <laughs> but it's actually kind of fast. Yeah, it's, like shockingly fast. See, I could get I could I would say that I'm embarrassed to enjoy those, but a stock one, not so much. Yeah, I'm with you on that. And then they chose that that fucking green color is the hottest of garbage. Yep, I like green. That's not green. That yeah, is, they uh, use that. They it's gross. That's like that's like puke pee. Uh, like 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 the best vegetable, not not urine. Like is that you know like puked up peas. That's yeah. what it looks like to me. Like a it's like a, a little color. baby ate a bunch of pureed peas and then vomited them back up. That's again. that's the color. Yeah. Yep. So. Uh, as a purely stock vehicle, I'm going with hate. I'm going to go with you on hate as well. I'm not embarrassed to like that because yeah. I don't like it. Nothing. Yeah. Not good. Next up, a car that I barely even realized existed. 
the Volkswagen Eos, which is kind of like the Buick Cascada, except yep. made by, by Volkswagen. Uh, and I would say less good looking. I would say better. Yeah. So you can get this with a VR6, which is kind of cool. That's good. VR6 is good. I like the VR6. They sound really sweet. Uh, and so that might be enough redeeming quality for me to not totally hate my life, but I'm still like not super into it. I am not super into it, but I'm embarrassed to say that I, I kind of like it. It's a Volkswagen, Robbie. It's, I know, but it reminds me of the Jetta that I did like. Oh, so I see. I forget that you have a history with the TDI. Oh, so you don't talk about it that much. The, T, the 04 TDI Jetta, man. It was one of the best cars to drive. Was Great so manual transmissions. The most forgiving manual transmission I've ever. Oh, it so drove good. it. It drove itself. So good. The, the perfect the car. Volkswagen can make a trans. There's no doubt. Yep. And that, but this is like the next generation Jetta front end. And then it's a convertible in the back. Two door. And smaller. It's that's, like golf yeah. sized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, I get, yeah. That's probably a better word. Golf, not Jetta. I think it's golf sized. I'm not sure though. Um, I, I'm embarrassed that I kind of like it. Yeah. Yeah. It has a sunroof too. How? Like through the cloth? The, so no, it's got a folding hardtop. Oh. With a sunroof. I came a little more into it then. It seems really fucking redundant. <laughs> That's, but you know what? That sounds I, so expensive. A lot of parts like to fail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of into Very it. heavy. That's kind of cool. Man, we're embarrassed that we love that car. I don't... <laughs> Admit it. I don't know. I, I guess I feel like if I said that I liked the Buick, I can't say I don't like this. Yeah, this is, I, this is better than the Buick. You know what I mean? All right, fine. I'm into it. All right. I'll I'll, I'll let you have that one. Right, yeah, Next more. one up. We've talked about this one before. I love it. You love it. The Chrysler Crossfire. I don't. Robbie, don't lie to me. I want to love it. I can't. I'm, I I'm embarrassed really, to say that I want to love it. I really it could have been the so SRT. Good. It could have been so good. The SRT version is real good. I would. Supercharged V6. Uh, has that power folding wing thing that's really cool. I'm super into that. The uh, the base model one is is neat, but it's not it's not as good. So yeah, I we had one in automotive school, and it was like the, it was like one that got rejected from Chrysler, and they gave it to the school. So we were uh, always working on it. Well, not working on, it, but like you know, tinkering on it as a demonstration stuff, and it was like. They made it sound like it was like this the best sports car in the world, and we weren't allowed to like do anything to it. And I just grew to fucking hate it because of it. I was That's like, fair. This isn't like the best car ever. This is, I mean, it feels like an NSX or something. You're like, this is the best car. Don't you know this? You got to respect it. Okay, I get it. No, it's a Chrysler Crossfire, man. It's it's fine. Just crush it. Bring <laughs> bring the Viper in. I will give a shit then. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus! Because they did that with Vipers too. They sent it off to the automotive schools. Oh, I know. And then they there crushed was, them. Uh, Dmac had, I think, two of the Viper V10s uh, that they had just sitting, and um, they were going to throw them away. And I think they had to. I don't think they could give them to anybody. You, yep, you could. Like you, you couldn't sell them. You couldn't do anything with it. They went to the automotive school, and when the school was done with them, they got crushed. That was the agreement. That sucks. Yeah, it's really too bad. Yeah. So. Bad. so. Like a great time travel. I'm sitting on love with that for sure. I'm sitting on not love. No, 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 no. Damn it. All right. Uh, Next up, the first gen Nissan Versa. Love it. Thank you, JB. Such a (laughs) Nissan fanboy, Robbie. That's not true. Can't even take you serious. It costs like $11. It costs $11.5 to maintain forever. And you can drive the ever living piss out of it as a time travel car. Johan proved uh, that this is the answer. His his swapped one was too powerful, but as a base model, it would make a decent Sunday Cup car. Yeah, man, sold. So this is a great car. Or you can have a fit like everybody else. Yeah, I don't want a fit though. Exactly, you want a Versa because Versa is no, always the answer. I, I want a first gen Toyota Yaris. Much better. That's what I want. Much better. I'm not oh, embarrassed gosh. by that at all. That's a that great egg. vehicle. Oh, it's so good. I want great one. So vehicle. Bad. Yeah. 
If I was going to do a serious Sunday cup effort, that's probably what I would deal with. I fully so. support this 100%. Everyone yeah. send Adam his Yaris's oh, on Facebook Marketplace. God. Everyone. God damn it, Robbie. <laughs> so that's the end of that list. So it wasn't. Uh, that it was wasn't it. As... There's not one more. I didn't there say. There is one. it. That's it. That said of 12. I know. It did say 11 more. of 12 for some reason. I don't know. It also, I got Audi a 12. TT also said two of 12. I got so a 12. I, don't know I, what's with I got that. a. I got a 12 then. Okay. The uh, Plymouth Prowler. That is a car I'm embarrassed to say how much I love. I don't hate it as much as I used to. You've changed, man. I think that was a. So I think that, like, when I was in high school or in my early 20s, um, that was one of those cars that, like, like, everybody told me I was supposed to hate it. So I did. Oh, I was told that you were supposed to love it. Like, it was like this hot rod and, like, no. you know, it was advertised like this super no. cool. Like, it was in, like, all the fucking magazines and like everyone was like, this. yeah, but like, uh, we weren't old enough to be allowed to be into it. Oh, I ignored that. I, I didn't have anyone to tell me otherwise. I just read the magazine. Oh. I was like, yeah, man, that's a hot rod. It's cool. I mean, it's real disappointing that it's a automatic transaction with a V six in it. Yeah. That was before but I really knew about those types of things. Really. What we needed was we needed Chrysler and Chevy to get together because Chrysler knocked it out of the park with the design, but yeah. then let us down with the drivetrain. Mm-hmm. And then you've got GM that made the SSR. Oh God. Which had a great drivetrain in it. You could get them with the six liter and a T56, uh limited slip rear differential, like everything you'd ever want in life. But it had that on top of it. Yeah. It looked like that. It looked like an SSR, which was less than ideal. But you are embarrassed to say that you like that car. No, I don't. I thought you did. No, I just uh, many, many moons ago, we did one where we uh, we did a show where we talked about cars we thought would be worth something in the future. That's what I'm confusing it with. Yes. And while I don't think that it's a good car and I don't I would never own one, um, I do think that it probably will be worth something. I will agree. And I I put the Prowler in that same category. You know, there's maybe, yeah, I there's, think the Prowler is probably more. I would I'd be surprised if it wasn't like they a few really out there. Cool. They look really cool with Lambos on them too. I'm just saying. I mean, it, it, it works. I mean, everything does, a, but it really works. Well, to some extent, but really, even that car breaks my Lambo door rules. Uh, because they do. Because my rules are that you got to have a window frame. Yep. Uh, and that it needs the top of the the top and bottom of the door need to be in further than the middle of the door, so that it's got a curve to it. Yep. That's when it looks best. I will I will agree that's when it looks best, but I've definitely come around to the uh it doesn't necessarily have to have a frame. Well that's only because that's my fair. car doesn't have a frame and I don't have a yeah, choice. I'm, I'm well aware. Of <laughs> I'm well aware. And people love it. I get compliments on it every Oh, event. I'm sure. But the every prowler event. I really like the prowler with Lambos on it. It's pretty cool. It works. It works really well. So yeah. Uh, so that's that's definitely deserving of the list. Yeah. Uh, so pretty much any car I like probably could fall on this list. It seems like, yeah, it happens. So, uh, this list of cars that we are embarrassed to like is presented by factory fabrication, Factorifabrication.com. If you need to get caged or railed, uh, head over and get a hold of Booney. You need custom fabrication, whether it's for your house, your car, your yard. Uh, if you need railings, if you need tables, chairs, furniture, um, decor for your business, um, Booney's got you covered. They've been posting a bunch of really cool stuff. They did a bunch of um, like really high end stuff for some houses. That's on their Instagram. If you want to check that out, um, I had somebody reach out. Actually, I've had multiple people reach out asking about cages for their cars. I told them to get a hold of Booney. Use the code ten tenths. Um, it won't get you anything, but uh, at least then he'll know where you came from and tell them that it's because he did such a good job on my cage. That's why you want a cage, and then he'll be flattered and he'll do your cage. Uh, Factorification dot com. Boom. Heck yeah. What do we do this weekend, Robbie? Nothing. I did nothing. I got sick. That's what I did. What'd you do? Uh, I did a bunch of walking around, hung out with my kid. You did way more walking than I did. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Actually, we drove around in Josh's car quite a bit or uh, Sam's rental. Yeah. That was way easier. Yep. So for those that... Are living under a rock and can't really put it together. <laughs> can't read a, 
can't read a t- can't read a title, a description, yeah. or any yeah. obvious place that we we would be. We were at uh, Road America for the final round of Grid Life 2021, and our first times for both both of us there, right? You've yep. never been there either. I've right? never been. Yeah. I've only ran some laps on iRacing or Seto Corsa. Um, I wasn't prepared for how gorgeous the track was going to be because it's uh, it literally is a track in the middle of a national park. Yeah, it's um, the town that it's in. We went in there Friday night into it's, Elkhart Lake. Uh, no, it's, uh, Washington. Uh, it's a or Washington, Wisconsin. Yeah, it's a Wisconsin. It's a, it's a different town. It's not actually Elkhart Lake. It's, it's a, not. It's not called Elkhart. Or, uh, Elkhart Lake. What town was it? Where were we? It was. I'll look it up. Anyways, I don't know. Uh, there's only one way to describe it, though. Adorable, and that's adorable. We went in Friday night. Uh, we got there at a reasonable time. So then we went into town Friday night with a couple of other Good Life buddies, and we ate at the place you have to go and eat at, apparently, uh, if you go to Road America, and that is Seepkins, which is like a little bar thing that's attached to uh, like a lake resort. Yep. And inside there, there's... Um, okay, that, was, that actually is Elkhart Lake. That is yep. Elkhart Lake. The okay. town I was thinking so, of was... Uh, Plymouth, because we went to Plymouth for Walmart. That's yeah. the other town. Okay. My mistake. That's Elkhart Lake is an adorable town. Yes. Super adorable. Um, Siebkins is like famous. I guess all the race car drivers go there and drink, and there's racing stickers and stuff like that all over on the walls. And, yep. And just the, food, the food's there, really good. So. The food was really good. I really, yeah. Um, it was like I've some, never seen my kid eat a grilled cheese with such ver- veracity. He was super into that grilled cheese. Yep. They had like some, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Like like gourmet style of food yeah. to the bar. Yeah, food. It, was, it was it was kind of fancy. Yeah, it was and it was it was not cheap and it was so good. It was worth it. Yeah, I had this prime rib sandwich that was really really good. And I'm actually kind of sad that I didn't get their adult grilled cheese. I got whatever the burger was called, and it was excellent. Yeah, it had a, it had a weird name, didn't it? Yep, and it had it had a bunch of toppings that I knew you wouldn't like. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> notice it, but the uh, the prime rib sandwich that I got had uh, aioli on it, which I think is just fancy mayo. Basically, yeah. In and the so context I, of how you would eat it, yes, it's absolutely the same. And so I wiped it off as best I could without <laughs> making a scene uh, because I don't want to deal with it. And then I just ate around the places where I didn't get it off very well and uh, just call it a day. Their fries the were best, best fries I've had phenomenal. Maybe ever. Maybe the best fries ever. I'll go. Those I, were I will say out that. of control. Awesome. I've had good fries. Yeah, that one takes the cake. Those were really, really good. So uh, that's a, it's an interesting town. That's a town that like I could see myself just going to and hanging out. It's, like it's, even outside of the fact that it's attached to a racetrack. It's like a really small, like lake town resort type thing. It's like, a quiet place to take small. a week off. Yes. Cause I mean, cause yeah. we were well, on Saturday night, we tried to find some food because uh, uh, E-Man's uh, wife doesn't eat meat. Or She's pescatarian. pescatarian. There you go. So we were trying to find something decent. So basically, the, there's not a lot of restaurants. There's like <clears throat> a few, and they half of them are closed because yeah. the season is not. It's out of season. Yeah, and at the the track has a bunch of really good food in the food stand, but Drink. basically the only thing she could eat was fried cheese, and I think she'd had her filling of fried cheese that week. She had yes, or that day already. Well, the, so and the problem it. was that the the restaurant closed in the evening, so like I never actually made it to yeah. the restaurant. I was so disappointed because. Saturday we started so late and everything was kind of yep. mashed together, or fr- yeah, Saturday and then Sunday yeah. kind of the same thing where I was like, you know, we're just getting keep keeping things rolling. Had three races in one day and I never made it down to the restaurant. And yeah. Saturday night it was closed. So I'm like, ah. so I, I missed out on like one of the things I put on my list of things I had to do and I didn't do it. I didn't get a brat there. I'm actually kind of disappointed in myself for not doing that. I got as well. nothing, man. I'm I'm still mad. <laughs> I got myself. breakfast from there. Breakfast was really good. Yep. Yeah, so. and I'm, I know I'm going to hear it all week from everyone saying you didn't go there. I I know I'm I'm aware of the the fuck up. I, I get it. I'm I sorry. It was my bad. I walked down there twice and it was closed both times. I walked down there. I'm sure we'll be back. Absolutely. So uh, let's kind of let's kind of go through this chronologically though. So Friday when we get there, 
Uh, the place is huge. The paddock is ridiculous and gigantic. And I think it goes on forever. Uh, after the last couple of events have been so hectic in the paddock area, like trying to squeeze everybody in. Uh, I think that the good life staff kind of understandably just was like, you know what? Fuck it. Figure just it out. Let park. <laughs> yeah. Figure and, it out. Uh, when you let people do that without any real guidance, they will fuck it up. <laughs> and, and they, and they we did accomplish that pretty well. So the lines were not uh, straight. They were all over no, the place. Robbie was real frustrated, like almost immediately. As soon as we pulled in, I was like, really? <laughs> no one's in li- like, there's not even like a straight line. It's just like, there's some cars no. over here. There's like some trailers and stuff over here. It's just, no one's in, like in a good spot. Mass chaos. So I tried to find a decent spot. Then like a, I got parked kind of like directly across from JB. And then Matt yeah. Williams came rolling up on his bike. Hey, we're all up here. Great. We're going up there. Bye. <laughs> so yeah, there's like kind of almost three tiers to that, um, that paddock. Yep. Basically. And we parked way up on the top. Um, yeah. And so there was enough room for everybody up there. It was fine. It was more organized. It was still not the best, but it, it was more organized. Yeah. It was a more out, like it was kind of so, out of the way and yeah, it was nice. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was fine. Uh, and then Saturday morning we woke up and, uh, you couldn't even see the racetrack from where we were standing. You couldn't even see just, the other part of the, of the paddock. Yeah. Like, like, you couldn't like see from the, the top paddock to the bottom the paddock. paddock, you couldn't see anything. Yeah. Cause it was so foggy. It was probably the densest fog that I can remember being in. Yeah. It was pretty dense. It was pretty wild. And, um, totally understandably. So road America does not allow you to race on the track when there's fog, which is so justified. <laughs> yeah. No, I, um, that's one of the fastest average speed tracks in the country. Yep. Maybe the world. And um, it's basically a bunch of really long straightaways connected by 90 degree corners for the most part. Uh, yeah, there's a few fair. little mixtures here and there, but for the most part, that's pretty much what it is. And so it's a bunch of like go really fast, coming hauling down into the brakes and then turning. Yeah, it's and real, that's real really hard not brakes. a good thing to be doing when you can't see very far in front of you. Yeah. And if you can't see the corner station, basically as you're passing it. Is that the fastest you've ever gone in your car? Uh, yes, probably. Uh, yeah, it was the fastest I've ever gone on the Z. Okay. But not by a terrible lot. No. Yeah. I didn't, yeah, I didn't go that terrible fast in all reality. Not, I wasn't going Ferris speeds. Well, I mean, you don't have 1200 <laughs> horsepower either. <laughs> or so. Or so. Allegedly. Ish. Yeah. Ish. The public number says 1,200. And I don't know what he runs it at either. I, I mean. 2,000. I don't know. The car was broken. Yeah, and he broke the so, record with broken. With a, yeah, with a broken car. He broke it at least twice with a broken car. Yep. He, he, I saw he said something about thinking he lost the head gasket at Long Beach. <laughs> yep. And so he made the entire weekend at Road America. I think he did four or five laps total, honestly. Um, but with a blown head gasket and a car that was overheating almost instantly. <laughs> yep. His, uh, so the, pretty, the highest water temp or whatever was left in the system was 287. <laughs> so dumb. So the, those gaskets are gone. Yeah. Yeah. But I saw you had the engine. Wild. I saw you had the engine pulled already. Yeah, I was already back at uh LME, but um yeah anyway so monday or pff, monday, monday saturday morning we didn't get started I, I mean we were at least two hours late weren't we uh, yeah it was two hours because i think the first session on track was at ten thirty, and it was still kind of foggy but you it was clearly breaking up and then we went yeah. out because we were this the gltc practice was the second group out and that was yeah right your, before, your right hpd before session no my HPD session was this first race. No, that's what practice is. Practice is HPD. Qualifying is time. The, pro- the problem is with it, with H with the practice and qualifying is that you don't go in any random, like there's no organization. You just show up and run. Yeah. So it's like, I'm learning the track, getting my car sorted. I'm in everyone's fucking way. So yeah. it's just, it, I, I hate practice and qualifying in GLTC when there's 50, 60 cars. Cause it's, yeah, it's never clean. It's never good. I never qualify well. I'm dramatically faster in the race. That's what it is. What it is. Well, and then like even 
even uh, outside of the fact that you're faster during the race and stuff, like um, what times were you running? Uh, I did a minute 40. Two, two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. Two minutes and 47 seconds was the best I could muster in practice and qualifying. Okay. And then I did and the a, a two- fastest time that I saw this weekend on a GLTC uh, on Race Hero was a 229 two tw- and change. 229 and change was, was like your top two runners. Right. So there's a huge speed discrepancy uh, between you and the front of the pack. For sure. That track. So well, it's, every and track. like, I mean, the- I get the, I get the, like, you know, the, the, like the fastest time attack car to the slowest time attack car. There's a giant gap there too, but they're gridded accordingly and they're put out in sessions accordingly. That's not how it goes. In- Cause theoretically GLTC, we should all be matched up. And, and again, guys in the back, like me, you know, our cars are not prepped to the limits. Um, I'm, I'm fully aware it's a knife at a gunfight. Yep. Um, but I, like, you know, You're learn, not Tom O'Gorman. I'm not Tom O'Gorman. And so like going going to Road America for the first time, learning the track, getting kind of like getting somewhat comfortable. And then yeah, like the best I could do is like a two forty seven. And then the first race, once I was it like we're you know, once I was able to get kind of around out of traffic, because the first race was really weird because yeah, I was it was basically broken up into like the like six cars in front of me were running like two thirty nines. And then I was yep. doing two forty threes. And then the cars behind me were like two forty sixes and slower, so I yeah. was just alone for like the whole yeah. race. Yeah, once we sorted that, once we sorted out, so it was yeah, like but yeah, I was five seconds faster than uh, what I was running out in qualifying. That's silly. Yeah, so it was just I didn't qualify well. Um, it, yeah, I didn't start running well until the the actual race. Anyways. So, so do you get like jitters or what is it? Why do you think you qualify so poorly so consistently? Uh, I think my my mentality shifts. So like in practice and qualifying, <clears throat> so far, I'm not racing it. Like besides Gingerman and and Heartland Park, I know those tracks. But in my mind, it's practice. I'm not trying to. I'm you know everyone's trying to like get up to speed. I'm not trying to be in anyone's way. I still have that time attack mentality of I don't want to fuck up someone else's like practice session or time attack. You know whatever. I don't want to be in someone's way. So right. I'm way more courteous in the race. Spending more time in your mirrors and stuff like that. Absolutely. In the race, I don't like if you're behind me, you, you can fucking stay back there. I'm gonna <laughs> that's do literally what your job I'm, is. I'm gonna do everything I can to keep you back there. Yeah. But during practice during practice and qualifying, I still haven't got to like where I can just jump on track, get that red mist, be ready to go. And I, I, it's 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 getting there. Like during the race, but yeah, my mentality shifts completely. Okay. So I, I think that's the biggest thing about it, is that I I, I can't switch off that courtesy, that real nice, like courtesy time attack, clean session mentality to go straight to race session. I, I the race that the flag has to drop for that. <laughs> and I'm right. So, but yeah, so, so yeah, I didn't really start driving well until the actual race. And That's I'm, fair. Yeah, I'm fully aware that I drove like shit during practice and qualifying. So race one happened Saturday evening, Saturday night. Yes. Yeah. Like, it know, was kind of getting five, late. Five thirty, because I like I had my underglow. It was on. starting to get dark. Yep, it gets really dark there. Yep. Um, I but, don't know what it was, but it just seemed like it was way darker there than it is around here. It was super cloudy, which didn't help anything. There's a lot of trees, so yeah. As soon, like as soon as the sun started to go down, it got dark. Like at seven yeah. o'clock, midnight feeling. Yeah. It's so like yeah, the five thirty race. I had my underglow on. You could kind of Ugh, excuse me. So there's a lot of a uh, lot of glowing rotor pictures uh, from both Time Attack and GLTC sessions this weekend. Yep, which is cool. Yeah, there's a there's a picture that uh, Musaigan Media got of me where I locked him up going into uh, Canada Corner. Yep. Yeah, so, Robbie, what's up with that? Hey, Lewis Hamilton locks his brakes up too, man. It happens. Yeah, how about he'd love ABS too. Yeah, fuck ABS. I'll be, I'll be a better. I'll, I will die on that hill. It's gonna. It, it will make me a better driver. Actually, it made me feel better because uh, who was it? Um, Matt, blanking on his last name. Um, really good driver. Excellent driver. What was he in? Uh, I don't think he's driving currently. He's um, oh. but must be. Is that right? No. Uh, we, he's the one that runs NCM. Who's the guy that we met at? He was working grid at Alpine Horizon last year. 
Darus. I want to say it was him. Matt Darus. He was driving this weekend. Okay. I want to say it was him. Because it was in he the was in, He was in an E36 this weekend. Okay. I think that he made the comment in a GLCC chat. This because after somebody posted a picture of their flat spotted tires, he goes, If I had no ABS, my tires would look like that every session. And it made me feel really good <laughs> that he that, that a driver of that caliber said that. And I'm yeah, like, oh, Matt's okay. a very Matt's got a lot of experience. I'm, Matt's I, a real cool and guy. It, and, it, and it might not have been him, but I that's why I remember it being. But somebody in the GLTC chat made that comment. I was like, Okay, I don't feel so bad about locking them up every once in a while. <laughs> I mean, I suppose that's fair, but I'm still going to give you shit for it. Absolutely, it's like literally my job. Can't, I, if I you know, if I can't be perfect, then what am I doing here? But no, I, I there was two separate times that I know I locked them up properly, and I was really glad I had RRs because they're a little bit more forgiving. Yeah, your Hoosiers, you would have been because yeah, Hoosiers would have been screwed. But yeah, like there was one yeah. time going into Canada Corner, I locked him up because I was coming in hot. And then there was uh, uh, one other time going into turn, the last turn, 14, before the front straight. That that was a that was when I really realized that pad knockback is horrible at Road America. Just horrible. There's nothing you can so do that to was, stop it. That was interesting. I was watching. There were um, – we watched a couple of Saturday, Sunday's races from turn five. Yep. Uh, and so where we were sitting, you could see them just uh, as they're coming down the hill, just before the braking zone, into the braking zone on five, yep. and then up the hill up to six underneath the Corvette bridge, right? Yep. And there were a lot of guys that you could see from five to six. They were checking their brakes as they were going up that hill Yeah, uh, before they hit the braking zone for six. So apparently that pad knockback thing is a real problem for a lot more people than I maybe thought. Yep. I I. Apparently, yeah, you go to the big brakes if you go to the not two piece rotors. It's like, yeah, I got I got big one piece rotors, which is a, a you know, a, you know, not helping. And right. then the uh, the curbs at Road America are super aggressive. So like, if you're running the curbs, you're bouncing those uh, rotors back and forth and knocking those pads back really bad. Yeah. So Heartland Park, I didn't know, and Gingerman, I really didn't notice it, or at Gingerman, I really didn't notice it that much. But for sure, notice it when it came back, and that's what was confusing to me because, like during practice, I thought that the, my that valve had helped been enough to help that. So, like, I I was kind of feeling it in practice. I'm like, well, no, something doesn't feel right. And then in qualifying, I overcooked it going into turn 14. I locked him up because like, I was like fighting the race, like something's broken. This ain't right. And then during the race, I'm like, oh, I'm stupid. That's pad knockback. Still, god damn it. Oh okay i can i can work with this and then i was fine and then i cut five seconds off my lap time right so yeah it's yeah fighting that once i realized what it was and 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 got a good feel for it i was able to adjust for it the rest of the weekend it was no big deal but yeah pad knockback was a was a real motherfucker at road america and i'm I'm not the only one that had that (laughs) yeah so how did your first race go uh, pretty good. There was uh, some good battles uh, right in the beginning, and then it spread way out. Um, yeah, I remember. I think that was the one that you maybe spread out the most. Absolutely. Yep. It, 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 I wasn't close to anybody after the first maybe lap and a half. And then it was like an yeah. HPD session for me. It was, yeah, the cars in front of me were running probably almost three seconds faster than me. The cars behind me were running three seconds slower than me. It was, it was just, it was just gapped out. Yeah. Um, the rest of the races were a lot closer and also the, the track conditions weren't near as good. Right. And then I, I made some judgment calls that were poor. So on, uh, on sa- uh, Sunday woke up and it was wet. Yeah. Saturday night it rained pretty good for a while, actually, I think. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll kind of bounce back and forth because like we were doing, you know, typical grid life night stuff. And it started raining at like 1 AM and everyone's like asleep and I'm waking up. He's like, I can't sleep through anything. And I got up and took everything that was cloth and put it in the trailer and then put the tent over the Z. Cause I didn't bring my windows. Cause I was like, ah, it's not going to rain. I don't need that. I got an enclosed trailer. Yeah. But I didn't want to start the car in the middle of the night either. And be that guy yeah. at 1 AM. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just put the pop up over it and it'll be good enough. Yeah. And it was, but, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, the, We'll talk about racing, and then we'll go back to the fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's what I figured. <clears throat> and oh, then, excuse me. So, I'm still good. really tired from this week. That happens. Yeah, Lots the first, of yawning. The first race on Sunday, or so race two, was a wet track. wasn't raining, but the track was wet. 
and I, I still haven't done a lot of wet track stuff. So I went out, had my, uh, my accelerators on, which is, you know, they're not a great tire, but they're fine. Uh, drove cautiously. Hot boy. Doing some hot boy shit. Dude, every time I see those back wheels, I laugh. <laughs> it's just, there's so much stretch there. Robbie. And of course the two eighty fives came in stock as soon as I ordered them. Um, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So I drove real cautiously and raced two just cause yeah, it was, it was a wet track was just focused on not making an ass of myself and battled a little bit as a, as best I could in the, in the conditions. Yeah. Not, not again, not a great race. Cause I was driving like a pussy. And I think then, that was a race where uh, race one, there were a number of DNFs and stuff like that. And so race two, you had a bunch of guys um, behind you that were remarkably faster. There was a couple that were behind me and then we got, and we didn't get a lot of clean racing because there was a couple of really bad accidents. Yeah. Um, um, right. Like right after the first lap, like going on, going into turn one, um, I'll just say someone. So someone's, if you watch the live stream, you can see it, but, um, yeah, yeah, he's, he slid into the wall and basically rode off his, his car. And so that was 2000. Uh, yeah. So we had a couple laps of, uh, a couple laps of caution. Basically the whole race was caution. So there wasn't, yeah, there wasn't a lot of a good racing in race two. Race three was a lot better. Uh, but I made the mistake of leaving my accelerators on thinking that the track was still not going to be dry. And by the time the second race had ha- happened, like there's only a two hour gap between race one and race two. Right. And, uh, and, it, and it, it sprinkled a little bit. The sun never came out. And it, like, no one was saying like, ah, it's, you know, it's really drying out. And then Ryan and stuff came in after, you know, because they went right before I went out for the race and they like, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting dry. I'm like, ah, well, we'll just, we'll run the accelerators. It's fine. And of course they're much slower. Um, the track was dry enough. I should have been on the RRs. Or I should have been on a way better tire to begin with, but whatever. Um, so they are noticeable, even to the RRs. Yeah, they're they're not as fast. They're predictable. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a decent predictable tire. It's just right. Not, it's yeah, just not but fast. like it's it's still noticeably slower even to the RR. Which... Oh, for sure. There's there uh, cornering speeds are dramatically less. Yeah. Okay. And that's all of Road America. It's it's how fast can you take this corner? Right. That's 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 the secret. Can you take it faster? Do it. And you couldn't to those tires. <laughs> Right. Um, and then I put the RRs back for race four. Right as I'm rolling into into grid, I'm seeing Luke McGrew and a couple other guys throwing on their other H2Os. I'm like, fuck, I made a mistake. And it's kind of spitting, misting, like just, just a little. I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe it's going to hold off. And we pull out for the pace lap, and it fucking starts raining. I'm like, nope. Made that mistake, so I, my tire strategy was hot garbage on Sunday, and then of course that race started basically and ended on caution. So it was it was not a fun race for a lot of people. I made it through the weekend, no no issues. Uh, the car's getting pulled apart probably by the time you're listening to this for all my off season upgrades. Um, I don't think anything I'm doing will be affected by whatever rule changes come out. I might change a few things as it goes, but. Uh, yeah, transmission's getting pulled. Um, clutch flywheel is getting pulled off. Basically, anything that can make the engine rev faster and get me some mid mid horsepower. That's that's kind of where we're going with that. Getting a proper tune. See if I can get it so I can shift confidently and faster. Hell yeah! But at the same time, I'm still not going to spend the money to that put me at the front of the pack. In all reality, I'm not. I don't have Just that mid- budget. Just more mid would be fine. Yeah, that's just to be a place where there's more likely to be some action. Yep, that's I mean, not that there haven't been for you already. But. No, I've I've had really great battles in the back because there's been five or six cars throughout the whole season that have kind of been about the same speed as me, same level <laughs> of prep, if you will. Yeah, and uh, so that's been great. It's been really awesome. So I'm hoping to kind of like move my way up the pack a little bit, but with realistic ex- realistic expectations. So. Work on my racecraft. Try to be a better driver. We'll see if Jabay's yeah. rules actually benefit me at all in any way, shape, or form with my plans or if they completely screw me. One or the other. It's fine. 
I'm excited for the rules. I feel good about the rule changes. Bring I think, them on. I don't know any of them specifically. I know nope. some gists of some of the rule changes for a few different things. Yep. Uh, I don't think that there's going to be a lot of change in the time attack. I think it's just going to be more defining no, more than uh, changing. Basically. But I think there's going to be some pretty significant changes coming in GLTC. It should be interesting. Yep. I think the biggest thing will be tires. That's kind of been the, the rumor. I mean, again, yep. I, I don't know what they are. No, nope. um, there's been some talk in the chats. Um, so I think I've seen that stuff as well. So yeah, I think anything that changes isn't going to affect any of my plans. And if anything, it might actually play into my plans a little better. But we'll, it's obviously yet to be seen. But I, I don't think anything that I'm doing is going to be affected by the rule changes. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, I also want to, I, while I'm here, I want to shout out Masaigan Media. He's been at a couple of these Grid Life events this year. He got what is probably my favorite picture of the car ever. Uh, going yeah, there's a couple of really good shots of you uh, from his his galleries. Yep. There's some really good ones from you. I, I think he took a couple of me at Heartland Park, and I gave him a bunch of shout outs um, on Instagram and stuff. And I think he, I don't know if it was just happen chance or if he actually sought me out and got some pictures, but I, I really appreciate it if, if, if he listens by chance. But the picture going down uh, into Canada Corner where I'm not locking up my brakes, probably my favorite picture ever taken of the car. Um, I might actually get that one framed. I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. Oh, really? Yeah, the, nice. co- the coloring is is perfect. The car looks good. It's got the wheels I like on it, not the shitty Hot Boy ones. Um, yeah, it's just the car's in focus. It's at speed. It's like they got the they got got the you know the, the the changing colors of the trees, the fence. I mean, it's. it's I fucking love that picture, dude. <laughs> I fucking love it. It's so good. Cool. I mean, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Yep. So, um, but we had some fun off the track. Yes. Yes, we did. So just real quick, uh, because everybody, or cause I'm sure a lot of you probably noticed this this weekend, uh, kind of unknown to me. I ended up not being on the live stream at all. Uh, they brought Greg in once again. Um, and I get it. It's fine. I'm not like mad about it or anything. It's fine. Uh, I just didn't know ahead of time. So, um, I didn't do any of the live stream. I ended up just hanging out with my wife and kid and, and my buddies and, and watched some racing, enjoyed, uh, all that grid life is. So I don't have a whole lot of things to talk about outside of, um, what were, you know, the shenanigans we got into. So, yep. Yeah. There's but, that. Uh, before so. we do that, how about uh, we remember to shout out Petrobox? Remind everybody to head over to mypetrobox.com. We hung out with E Man all weekend, had a good time. He was super fun to be around. Uh, yeah, mypetrobox.com. We've got some E Man stories. We do have some E Man stories. Um, we got, but yeah, if you want to get your own Petrobox, this month is the Hoonigan box. Uh, you're late. It's probably delivered by the time you listen to this. Uh, if you were listening to the last episode, I would have told you to do it then. Um, but we, they, they get to do cool stuff like that where they get, where they hook up with, uh, companies like Hootigan or, you know, Jack's Wax and, and you get cool car care products and, and just cool car related items every month in a box. So it's been your door. It's like a present to yourself every month, or you could buy it for somebody else. Christmas is coming up. Use the code TTP 15 and get 50% off your first box or anything available in the store. I know I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to use the code. I'm going to buy a bunch of shit for a bunch of people for Christmas. If you listen to this show and I buy you presents for Christmas, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's what you're getting. Deal with it. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but yeah, they got, they got all sorts of cool stuff. Um, half the clothing that I wear is uh, from Petrobox. <laughs> that's not that's not an exaggeration. Yeah. Uh, so mypetrobox.com. I'm wearing one right now. Yes, you are. I wore a couple this weekend. I'm actually wearing a Grid Life shirt now. But uh, yeah, mypetrobox.com. Where do we want to start with the shenanigans, Robbie? Oh, God. It was um, an interesting weekend. Yeah, it was fun. It was good. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed it. So uh, let's let's give E-Man some crap. Yes. Before That's- we get into the nighttime shenanigans, because that was a daytime shenanigan. So E-Man was talking about, uh, he was there this weekend in, I believe, Intermediate HPD in his purple 350Z again. Yep. Uh same car he ran at mid Ohio and Heartland park. Yes. Um, kind of still working his way through the 
HPDE ranks because his ultimate long term goal is to end up in GLTC. Um, no, in Time Attack. So GLTC. he wants he wants to run his 240 on the track, and that car is not going to become a wheel to wheel car. No, he wants to get a, a, a like a hot boy Honda, and he wants to do grid life stuff with it, or GLTC stuff with it. I think you're putting words in his mouth. He wants to get. Oh fuck, it was a spec. It was a spec uh, Nissan. He want a spec R Nissan. He wants to do GLTC uh, stuff with Centra spec R. That's the one. A Centra spec R. Turn he it wants into to, a turn it into a BTCC car or that, a GTCC car. That's exactly what he wants to do. Um, that's his ultimate like. goals. Yeah, I don't think it is, but that's it, is, it is. It is because uh, he wants to, he wants to go all the way to. GLTC real racing, Adam. That's not how that works, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Not at all how that works. Are you sure? He wants to go straight from HPD to GLTC. That's what he wants. That's fine. You can do that. There's no reason that, that it's not a ladder system, Robbie. It's not like you go HPD to time attack to uh, GLTC like it's some sort of it's tier one, two, three system. That's not how it works, Robbie. You can start and stop anywhere you want to in there. That's true. You absolutely can. Absolutely. Damn it. <laughs> poke, 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 poke. Anyways. So yeah, email was there having fun in Z. Yeah. So, uh, he, at first he was saying that the car was feeling kind of weird. Uh, there was, uh, howling a lot through corners. The, the tires were like much screaming. noisier yeah. than they had been in the past. Um, to start with, we've realized that he was running, uh, pretty wild air pressures, uh, as compared to what you probably wanted. So tried that first. That didn't fix the problem entirely. Um, so then we got to looking at the car and he realized that uh, the front toe, um, uh, both of them was like way off. Um, so like, like, crawl, like, a, like an inch and, and a half. <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, it was egregious. It looked like, yeah, it looked like the wheel was turned like 10 to 15 degrees when the wheel was straight. I mean, it was, it was real bad. And so Dalton has a, a smart string kit. Yep. Is that what it's called? Smart string? I think so. Smart camber, maybe. I don't remember. He's got like an on the fly string alignment set. Uh, so we whipped that out. It's never been used before. So we had to figure out how to use it uh, and put it on the, or set the car up, got it, realized that um, he's got like an angle kit on the front of that car. Uh, that not only gives you some more angle, but also faster steering. And I guess it's not like even that uncommon of a modification for people to use for autocross and road course duty because of its faster steering. Yeah. It's, it's, it's already on the list for my car too. Yeah. So yeah, it gives you more angle, which is kind of a drift boy thing, but uh, not really. it's also, yeah, it's also useful, you know, just as a, as a Qu- yeah, quicker steering quick is what they really add. They yeah. advertise it for. Right. And so uh, it turns out that uh, when he put that on there, maybe that didn't get everything torqued down correctly, or I don't really know. I didn't crawl under there and look at it with him, but um, a bolt had backed off and and the toe was kind of doing whatever it wanted to essentially. Um, And so we got that all straightened out. It wasn't like the hardest thing in the world, but they kind of had to him and and Josh Fettis mostly uh, had to kind of, go through and figure out how to use the smart string smart string kits and apparently you're supposed to use some sort of weight on the string to keep it tight yep uh and we really didn't have like i think most people use like a plumb bob or something like that we were having a hard time finding anything like that so he dug through my kids uh backpack full of toys and used (laughs) logan's monster trucks and they worked well they did work well it was really funny he (laughs) My my kid was a little taken aback by it when he realized what was happening, but uh, no, it worked well. It went well. It apparently really, oh excuse me, it really really changed the car, made it a lot better. So, um, that's a kit I can see being really useful. The string kit or the angle kit? The, the string kit. Oh yeah, for sure. Because like especially Road America, it, it's really famous for having the worst um, rumble strips. Yep. Like with apex curbing and just can destroy those sort of things. And like, if you get good with it, yeah, it took us a little while to figure it out, but if you get good with it, I feel like you can get relatively accurate alignments real quickly. And like, it's something that you could definitely use in the evening to check the car before the next day. Yeah. Yep. I would completely agree. 
So, I mean, that's, um, and I noticed on mine too that um, they replace, like, they get adjustable arms and replace the uh, eccentric bolts and stuff. Because mine, uh, if I would hit the rumble strips, uh, my suspension would change. Like the, those, yeah. those bolts would just kind of move and let the the camber and, and uh, everything of the rear would just kind of change every session. So I was fighting that quite a bit this weekend too. So that's also on the list of things that are getting replaced immediately. And yeah. e- Eman's already got that stuff figured out on, or from the, the guy that he bought the car from already figured that out. Right. Are you going to take a note from that or what do you doing mean? what he did? Yeah. There's yeah. Basically doing very similar things to what that, his car already has. I mean, a lot of this is like super common stuff that I, I didn't have done to the car yet. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. It was just kind of funny seeing them doing that with uh, with monster trucks. So it's, it's the proper weight. It was good. It, yeah, it worked fine. So just silly. But uh, Friday night, we didn't get too weird. Like I said, we went to Siebkin's, uh and then we went we pretty much just kind of like I was running on literally like two and a half or three hours of sleep. You were, you were so, properly tired. Oh, I was, I was getting real crabby. Like even you, I know it. Yep. You uh, were towards the end. Dude, I was fucking livid pissed with that stupid air mattress. I was fucking mad. Cause I was I too you. tired to deal with this shit anymore. Uh, that, that might be so, the maddest I've seen you in a while. Like a long time. Like I haven't seen I get, you properly mad. And, and when I get that tired. Yeah. When I get that tired, I get cranky. I mean, it is, it is what it is. Like I'm not proud of it, but three hours of sleep and 24 hours or longer Some more than that. Yeah. Like I, I don't, I don't blame you one bit. I don't blame yeah, you one yeah. bit. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so we didn't really do a whole lot Friday night, Saturday night. Uh, ASM was kind enough once again to do a big, uh, block party style thing. They provided food and all that stuff for everybody. Um, the most delicious smoked meats that, uh, you'll find, um, and then Eman and Sarah and I did not partake because we you guys were, didn't want to wait in line for an hour, which I mostly but we, understand, but we waited even longer to get food elsewhere. But yeah, that's the, kind of the, what the, I was wondering. The problem you know, was, yeah, we would have waited an hour and then all Sarah could have eaten was mac and cheese. And I was like, yeah. I was like, I, I'm not a big pork guy. I'm sure the por- pulled pork was phenomenal. I don't question that for a second. Oh, see, pulled pork is my go-to. Oh. Uh, smoked meat. Yep. No, it's pork's not my thing. But, but like when when uh, Dalton does this, the smoked pork butts, those are delicious. So I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. So we went and tried to find something else that uh, was more fitting for her. We tried a couple of restaurants. Everything's closed for the season, or they're super understaffed. So we had one restaurant. They're like, yeah, it's gonna be best case scenario an hour after you order. And we're like, yeah, okay, how about not? And then we went to this other like. Had really good reviews. I can't think of what the name of it was, but it's like basically a like a Lakeshore bar or, so, or something. It was like a dive bar. We walk in. I was like, man, I fucked up. I shit the bed here, man. I'm sorry. We sit down and get the menu, and it's actually like a hidden gem. The food was delicious. I had a tater top bowl. I had loco moco. So it was like hamburger and a fried egg on tater tots with gravy, and it was fucking bomb. It was so that good. Sound really, really it was good. so good. And then I also that sounds got, like something we'll have to do next time we're there yep. for sure. That so, sounds awesome. Uh, I think it's Lakeshore Bar and Grill. Looks like a dive bar. Food is phenomenal. Try to try it's to go when it's kind of place. Yeah, try to go when it's not the off season because there was literally the, the, the cooking staff and one waitress slash bartender for the whole thing. So I mean, she was right. she was at her wits end. Uh, luckily, she liked us. And apparently, the people that were sitting at the table before us that were there, like like a big family of them, uh, were very like, they were thought they were high class and assholes because of it. She was, oh, less, weird. she was less than impressed and, uh, she, weird. she appreciated us because <laughs> we were just there for, we were just chilling, man. We we're just hanging out. We were in no rush. Yeah. But yeah. Excellent food. Excellent so, food. uh, but then after, after, for the shenanigans with uh, the ASM crew and eating with them and you guys going out to eat, we got together for uh, what has now become our grid life nighttime tradition. Standard practice is, now. Yes. Yeah. Standard operating procedure, um, which, which is karaoke with Matt Williams and his crew of, of uh, interesting folk. Um, so, it's we use karaoke very loosely. We use that term karaoke pretty loosely. 
Yeah. Because uh, it's literally just like we're playing songs off of Apple Music off of Matt's phone on <laughs> the speaker. And then if you don't know the words to the song that well, then you better Google it because you're kind of, uh, yeah, you're, that's how you're going to do it. It's just a regular song being played. And then we happen to have a microphone that also plugs into the speakers. So that's really all it is. You kind of sing I know, over it. Uh, Matt and Kevin are like very serious about seriously upping the game for next year. Yeah. So it's going to, it's going to get wild and silly. They're looking for projectors. They're looking for wireless mics so that we're not tied to one place so we can move around and be more stupid. Perfect. Uh, I don't mean like move around the paddock. I mean like dance and be idiots. Yeah. That's what we want. Right. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be hilarious next year for sure. So, but this year, uh, somebody, someone showed up with, um, like this big box of, I don't know, probably 500, you think? Uh, 200, but yeah. 200 glow, glow sticks, sticks, big glow sticks. Not like, like the, the little ones that you put around your wrist, but like, like real proper glow sticks, proper glow sticks and just started cracking them and throwing them into the crowd. And so then all this next thing, you know, everybody's throwing them back and forth at each other while we're singing songs. And like at one point there was uh, probably 30 to 40 people standing up front uh, dancing to Sandstorm by Darude. Yep. Uh, which is kind of like your go-to stereotypical EDM song. Yep. Uh, and they're all like throwing glow sticks in the air and somebody <laughs> gathered a whole bunch of them together and uh, we created what they called a uh, glow stick volcano. Which was well, a Where thing. was I for that? What happened? Uh they just threw them all up in the air, oh. just like all together. I didn't just, realize that's what they were calling it. Yeah, they, like yeah, they just take a handful and just... a whole bunch of them up in the air all at once. Yep, yep. So, uh, some some of the some of the guys had their younger daughters there. Like I would guess, ten maybe nine. Yeah, or 10. somewhere between like ten and twelve, probably. Yep. Uh, they were there, um, and they were singing. They wanted to sing "Let It Go" from Frozen. Yep. And then, so a bunch of the a bunch of the guys were like dancing around, like <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> like total idiots. It was really it funny because like Matt's like, okay, we're gonna, you know, they, the the girls requested it, so we want everyone to be supportive, and it's just like they start singing "Let It Go" by Frozen, and obviously no one's gonna be like, boo. Right. Everyone just steers into it one hundred percent, and we have one hundred percent. We have like fifty it, yeah. people. Singing Let It Go at the top of our lungs. Yeah. And just like <laughs> dancing around like total morons. It was amazing. It was great. So, uh, yeah, it was, I don't know, man. We have a bunch of weirdos. It's the, it's, it's the great. Most, it's I the love most, every second it's the it. most fun. Yeah. So, um, Robbie actually did karaoke. Uh, he was smart. He did it real early on. It was the first time I've ever done karaoke by myself ever. Really? Ever. I did it Look one other. You, t- I did it one other time because this pretty girl asked me to once. Look at you, Robbie. Yep. So we like we got back from dinner. We we're walking up the hill, and as soon as I get there, Matt grabs me. He's like, "Oh, you're doing this right now." He, you made the mistake of listing your um, karaoke songs on the podcast, and I made a note in my phone. Yeah, so he told me that he had put a note on on his phone so that he wouldn't forget it for next time Robbie was at an event. Yep. So as soon as I get back from dinner, I sing Scotty Doesn't Know by Lustra at the top of my lungs, and I nailed it. You nailed it, Robbie. I'll the, give you that. You nailed it. The only, There's no doubt. The only problem is at the end where they say Scotty Doesn't Know, Scotty Doesn't Know. They say it for like 40 seconds, and I'm just like, I'm yeah. only going to say this a few times, and I'm done. Yeah, but I, I sang I, the, I sang fair. all the other lyrics and I I did it start to finish and I did it well. That's well, totally well, fair. I think I did it well ish. I'm not a good singer. <laughs> yeah, I get that. <laughs> so, but actually, I think it's because of the podcast that I I could do that. Five years ago, no fucking way am I getting out and do, doing that by myself. No way. I still I still can't get up there and do that. And it helps that it's a song that I know. From start to finish, I don't need to. I don't need to read the lyrics, and it's a funny song. I enjoy it. Right. 
Yeah. I just, I can't bring myself to do that in front of a crowd. I wish I was a good singer. I really do. I, I, just, yeah. don't, I just don't have that voice. Yeah. But it was fun. Then, of course, yeah. uh, E-Man recorded the whole thing and posted it on the group. <laughs> yep. Yep. That happened. So you knew that was coming, though, Robbie. I've, I've, I was hoping like, it'd just be pictures, but oh, well. No, 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 no. It's got to be the whole thing. Yeah. It's a great. I mean, it's such a great song. It's, it's so good. <laughs> That's one word for it, I it's guess. A, it's a great song. How do you not like that song? It's not that I don't like it. It's just like, I don't know that it's a great song. It's a great song. It's a perfect karaoke song. Okay, it's, sure. It's mildly inappropriate. It's easy to sing. Yeah, that's fair. I'll give you that. <laughs> I didn't realize that like that's uh, like a like a song from a band. Oh, yeah. Lustra is a, like an actual good band. Like they, I thought that was just like a... I thought that was just like a song for the movie. I I think the song is for the movie. I don't know which came right. first, but yeah, they actually have a bunch of other stuff. I assume that it's not Matt Damon as the lead singer. No, but him as the cameo, fucking great. Yeah, hilarious. So, uh, I don't know what else do you want to talk about from those from uh, that whole thing. No, yeah, I so say we did karaoke. We had the glow stick war. Uh, we got. Somebody threw him on the roof, and then we got him taken yeah, away. Yeah, somebody like somebody being Robbie, some asshole. How, how did that go down? Because I uh, so we were throwing glow sticks, like a lot of them. Yep, people were just throwing them back and forth and back and forth. And there were a bunch of them on the awning of the camper. Yep, and somebody thought it'd be funny to try to throw it over the tech shed and into the paddock below. To throw Which the, is a long way to get the glow sticks to land on the people that aren't at karaoke. Um, the squares, yes, yeah, the squares, and it, the glow stick didn't go that far, and it landed on the roof. Um, and as at that moment, I realized I fucked up. I fucked up bad because w- within five minutes. There was so many glow sticks stuck so on the many roof. Glow sticks. And, I, and I was like, this is my fault. I did this. Yeah. And then though that I threw one more that I thought for sure was gonna short arm it because I was standing like way far away. I wasn't even looking at the shed because I was like making fun of Dalton because he couldn't get it there. So I'm staring <laughs> at him. Like so I'm aiming, let's just say I'm aiming south and the the shed is east. So I'm looking at Dalton, looking south, and I just take it and I whip it to the to the east. And it lands right on the roof. <laughs> like, I was like, there's no way it's going to make it that far. No, it made, it made it. So two of those are mine. I apologize. I apologize to the Road America staff. I apologize to Grid Life. I apologize oh. to everyone that had their glow sticks taken away. Uh, that, that, that was my bad. That was my bad. Start can't sh- go anywhere. Man. Yeah, man. It's a good thing I'm not drinking. Like I did that sober. Like a fucking idiot. Yeah, right? Like, Imagine. Yeah, if I was drunk, <laughs> shit. Problems for everybody. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we got the glow sticks taken away. Which is kind of funny because they just took them and then they threw them in a box and they just threw them in the dumpster in the, or the trash can and the trash can looked like it was on fire. <laughs> yeah, because so, it was glowing so brightly. It's ridiculous. <laughs> we put that many glow sticks close together. That's a shockingly large amount of light. Yep. So, but I mean, yeah. it's harmless. It was all in good fun. Yeah. Uh, but I think yeah. that probably led to the whole like road America saying, yeah, we're going to crack down on the no scooter rule. We're going to crack down on the no more idiots rules. So I know at one point uh, they, they, so somebody who works for road America made comment to somebody else that we're all a bunch of reckless idiots. Oh, they, uh, I believe they had that was NASCAR a term. there like I earlier. That was the, a term that was used. That's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> I was talking to um, one of the time attack drivers who was also an instructor this weekend uh, for the beginning for the beginner HPDE classes, and he was saying he was in the timing tower with the uh, Road America staff, and one of the older guys was in there uh, ranting and raving about our use of, quote, skateboarders or skateboards with sticks on them, <laughs> being scooters, because apparently he doesn't know what a, the term scooter. Which is ridiculous. Uh, and, you know, he, um, 
the guy I was talking to was just kind of trying to keep his head low, not let anybody know. Like, I don't, I don't want to get, I don't want to have to defend this. Like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want any part of it. No confrontation. Like, none. I don't want it. You're doing my job and then I'm going to leave. Right. Yep. And, uh, next thing you know, they, he said that right across straight across the tower in the paddock area. So there's the tower, the front straight, the pit, and then the first row of paddock spaces. Yep. Somebody was running at a red Miata <coughs> and he jumped up one, like two feet on the hood, ran across the hood, jumped onto the hard top, uh, and then onto the trunk and then onto the ground, uh, just like <laughs> ran over the car. <laughs> Like as this dude's complaining about us being idiots, uh, reckless idiots, like, yeah, there's no defending that one either. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, they're friends. So, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, they're friends. It's fine. It's it's whatever. So, <laughs> oh my god. But I mean, so, all in all, I don't think anyone got like in trouble. I don't think they actually confiscated any scooters. It was just no. It was one of those hopefully empty threats. And I mean, like yeah. like I said, they they had NASCAR there with all their fans. I hope we couldn't have been that rowdy. Really. Well, I would think that like when you get a large group of people together for any, like even IndyCar. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, I guess people it, kind it, of associate IndyCar with not quite as like a redneck average crowd as, um, NASCAR. as NASCAR, but like still when you get large groups of people, those people are going to exist no matter what you do. If you have a hundred thousand people just camping and drinking for the entire night, right. of course you're going to have some shit. So, I mean, there's yeah. nothing that, nothing that happened during grid life that would be egregious enough to even mention. Yeah. Besides but our, we're our, reckless idiots. Yeah. We're reckless so idiots. It's fine. No, no, no I'm harm not, done. I'm not mad about it. No, so. we, were, we were fine. Everything's fine. But the whole time we're just sitting there going, man, we're not getting invited back here. Now nah, we'll be fine. So I'll bet they'll still take our money though. Oh yeah. And we'll be back. It's such a good tracks. Place. These days have a hard time turning down, uh, rentals. Yep. You know what I mean? Like you kind of got to do it. I mean, it, so. I mean, it's, it's such a good track. It's one it, of those. It like, was, um, it's not from, as a spec from a spectator's point of view, it's not as bad as like Audubon or NCM. Like those are probably the two worst uh, spectator friendly tracks I've ever been to um, NCM real bad. Cause you can't see anything because yep. they've got all those big walls trying to contain the noise and Audubon. Uh, you can't see anything because it just kind of disappears behind some trees and then they're gone till they come through the last corner again. Uh, and so like, that's pretty rough. Uh, Road America is kind of like Autobahn in the fact that you can only see one or two corners at a time, but uh, they have done a lot of work to try and set the place up so that uh, it's spectator friendly, as spectator friendly as it can be. And so that makes it a lot better without cutting down all the trees. Right. So like, I mean, yeah. there's, there's literally hiking trails everywhere, like around yeah. the whole track. Yeah, it's a really, really cool place to just go and and take in a race for sure. Yep. No, I I drove it on the sim. I didn't like it at first. Kind of grew to really like it, and I drove it in real life, and I really like it. I, I, yeah. I definitely want to go back. I want to I want to go back and drive at my limit, which is top three, top five, uh, top five. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'd really like to go back and and do it do it again and drive better and faster. I don't need to go 183 miles an hour, but come on, man. I mean, if I get the opportunity, I'll do it. It's so nuts. It's he went north. The Ferris went north of 180 into in five. at least two spots. Yeah, yeah. Speed trap going into five at 183. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a couple of the interesting things that I saw through the weekend <laughs> for the track to kind of wrap this up. Um, obviously, Ferris he ran a two hundred four and eight? change. Yeah, I can't remember two hundred four exactly. and change um, with uh, what was essentially a broken car. He he said so. I my, Logan and I were watching from the front straightaway uh, after the what was going to be the final timed time attack session. Um, so we saw him just whip by at 180 miles an hour, which is just so dumb, dude. It's so dumb. It's, it's, so, it's fast. so fast. Uh, but yeah, he, he whipped through there. Um, when he got back, I was standing, he, he was real close. His 
paddock space was real close to where we were watching. So I went over there to kind of congratulate him and whatever. And, uh, he made mention that, uh, basically by turn two, the car was already starting to overheat. Uh, and he decided I'm either, uh, clearly this engine is hurt. I'm either going to reset a record or blow this car up. Those were his choices. Yep, no middle ground. Yeah. And, uh, he, Probably did a little bit of both, but definitely reset the record. So um, that is the fastest production-based car ever to go around that track. Yep. Uh, Production-based, meaning that it has a VIN number. It was a real car. That is the difference between it and like an IMSA GTLM car. Right. Um, Because those cars were never – those cars were – yeah, they were never VIN plated cars. Um, and they're built by professionals with millions and millions of dollars. And Ferris built his largely in his garage and some friends shops. So, um, monumentally fast, really, really impressive. Um, uh, Jackie Ding, uh, street mod went, uh, I think like two seventeen and change, uh, which is right on pace to be like pole position or real close to it. Top three, uh, for a GT four class. I think it was. Yeah. I can't remember. Maybe, or maybe it was GT three. I don't remember, but, uh, he said, uh, or I, I listened to him talk on slip angle. He said that, um, he's noticed, when they go to tracks that pro pro events have been held at, that's kind of where they end up being is in that um, top three spots for whichever class it was. I don't remember now GT three or GT four. And so that kind of became the goal. Uh, And so he knocked almost three full seconds, if not a little over off the street mod record, which is insane. That's so fast. So, uh first lap of the day on saturday first lap of the first session he already went uh on what i would call not a perfect track still a little bit wet a little bit slick he went 219 which was already faster than uh the record so um we kind of knew that i was going to fall as the weekend went too yep. which is just so silly <laughs> so um that was the end of the this was the last event of the of the 2021 grid life season so the points championships were decided uh i know we've talked a lot about the club tr battle and uh my buddy ryan um our buddy ryan sure i, I, get, I get no credit here my bad <laughs> um, he had to stay within a second i think it was or no it was less than that of handful of tents. I don't remember exact numbers anymore of whoever won in order for him to secure his second place points finish. Uh, no way he was going to take first away from Ben Thorne, uh, who is right now battling COVID in the ICU. Hopefully yep. he's hopefully he's out by now, but yeah. Yeah. Doing very better. Scary. Um, real serious, scary stuff, but he wasn't planning on being there anyway. He had already secured his season championship and that was just kind of going to be the end of it. Um, which I get, you know, budget reasons and stuff like that. But, um, Ryan still had the real opportunity to take second in the points season or the points championship this season. Unfortunately, Dana Vizinski is just some sort of freak of nature. Uh, (laughs) And as Ryan said, when he got off track with uh, Dana on Sunday, man, I feel sorry for that car (laughs) because he is not afraid to use those rumble strips and do whatever it is. He needs to find those last couple tenths. So uh, Dana's real fast and it was real fun to watch him. I'm certain that both Dana and Ryan had, they not had so many, um, mechanical issues throughout the year that those two would have put on a much more intense show. It would have been a much more intense points battle. Uh, next year, that class could be real interesting if everybody still is able to come back. Uh, so Ryan ended up third overall in the season. Ben Thorne took first and Grant Davidson took second by just a narrow margin. Um, really cool to see that in a class is brand new for the year so yeah, very, they were very still like very really highly competitive um consistently had pretty large numbers uh at every event uh, really cool to see it so quickly adopted into um the ranks so 
Yeah. It was it was well, also fun to see the the winners uh or podium people get uh champagne labeled <laughs> Jabubbly. Jabubbly. Uh and if you looked at the fine print it said Grid Life Premium Hot Tub Water. Yep. So that is because of us. <laughs> I I love we that, get, uh, yeah. Chris, Chris our little Stewart. group of, of idiots. I love that even Chris Stewart seems to be in on these jokes. Um I feel sorry for Adam sometimes. Chris was running around all weekend with a, a ventriloquist puppet that looked like Adam Jabe. And it was so good. It is it was really good. And then he's got and then oh, the, the champagne was silly and ridiculous. And it's just like, man. Sometimes I almost feel bad for him, you know? No, he should I mean I don't. No. But I almost. No. Yeah, so the best part is because Jabe is trying to do like the driver's meeting and it's like we're already under like a two hour delay because of the fog. He's, yeah. you know, there's nothing worse than paying Road America track rental prices for an empty track. Yeah. He's stressed. Of an hour. Very stressed. And then there's Chris Stewart with this puppet while he's trying to do the driver's meeting, just yeah. talking with him the whole time. <laughs> yep. But it's, it is so good. You know exactly who it is as soon as you see it. Oh, yeah. It was really well done. So. Oh. Very, very yeah. fun weekend, uh, all things considered. Uh, kind of went in a little nervous because of the track. You know, it's a, it's a big, intimidating track. So I was a little nervous about that. Uh, the weather kind of took a turn on us in a negative way, but that everything was fine. But yeah, I mean, it was just a really fun event to kind of wrap up the season, all things considered. Yeah, this year was probably one of the wildest and most enjoyable years I've ever had, like, period. Yep. Uh, not just in the car community, but ever. Um, I've gone more places and done more ridiculous things than y- this year than I thought I'd ever be able to do. Uh, and I even was able to bring my my family to three of those events out of the eight that I went to. Um, met lots of new people, made lots of new friends. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do quite such a ridiculous season or schedule next year, but Looking at the uh, the unofficial I can't, I can't schedule, wait. I'm I'm guessing I won't be able to make it to a lot of them anyways. So it kind of works out. Yeah. I, I, so I, so it'll be good. I, I, next year will be a lot of fun too, though. Yeah, definitely one of the one of my favorite years I've ever had. Though I mean, without this a, is, without a doubt, this has been a huge <laughs> this is, year. This is a year of of memories I'll never forget. So yep. yeah, I so, say you know I went into it going like I just I just want to be in GLTC. I just want to get there. And then I mean, yeah. I I finished every race I was in. I, I yeah, it was uh what twelve races or four? How many events did I go to? <laughs> yeah, Gingerman. Uh, you did both Gingerman yeah, events, so, <coughs> Heartland, and yeah, so this six, one. So yeah, four. Yeah, sixteen, seventeen races. If you count the fun race at, at so yeah, seventeen races this year. So yeah, now I can get more serious and be better. So, yeah, really exciting year. I'm really, really happy with how everything went and the fact that I finished the yeah. season <laughs> without any anything too major. I mean, yeah, the head gaskets blew out, but I, I fixed that and it was, I didn't miss anything. Yeah. Um, before we sign off, I got a couple things real quick. I want to remind everyone that uh, definitely want to get on the Apex Pro Gen 2. I love it. Uh, it was super fun getting to use the new predictive lights. Uh, it's very similar to how iRacing does the predictive lights. So you got the you got the light in the middle, and then if you're falling behind, it you know leans to the left, goes red; turns to the right, goes green. Um, so you know if you're doing better or worse than your pre, you know your best lap. And uh, that was really cool to use that. Uh, I got Eman uh, because I had the new Gen Two, so I was able to get the Gen One over to Eman, and Ryan borrowed the other Gen One. And Eman, I think, is heavily jumping into data, just like that. Uh, I was able to kind of explain the app to him right away, got it downloaded, got it synced up, ran a couple sessions with it, and uh, he was looking at data yesterday even, and a couple days before, actually. We were just kind of talking through it and, and uh, getting him acquainted with it, and I know he's he wants to do some videos, kind of like how I do mine with uh, using Dashware and then overlaying it. So I, was kinda, I gave him my template, and we'll see if uh, I have to help him through that because it's not as, not as intuitive as you would think it would be. Um, that is one thing that's that that'd be cool to have the subscription because it has, if you use your phone, you get all that. Whereas I, I don't do that. I just use my GoPro and then I overlay it. Um, but yeah, using the, using the gen two, I'm, 
I, I love it, man. <laughs> if you want to get yours, though, if you want to head over to Ape, or apextrackcoach.com, use code 10 tenths and uh, get 10% off with the window mount as well. Boom. Adam, do you want to wrap this up with some controversy? Oh, man, what are you going to do to me this week? Uh, people took the people took took the candy bar thing a little a little more seriously than I thought. Maybe I don't know. People, they took it exact. They took it exactly as serious as I thought they would. Apparently, I upset a number of people by having a love for paydays. So, <laughs> I mean, that's fine. Um, all right, I got the, none of these are great. I'm trying to decide what's best. Um, I have a good one too as well. If you got, if you got, if you got, may not be on your list. Yeah, if you got a good but, one, let's do it. These are okay, but I'm trying to. I, was, I forgot that I didn't add to it. You got one. Uh, one of them that I have a long running argument between me and Austin Covey and Daniel Dietch, who were apparently really upset about the, uh, peanut butter and jelly thing. Yep. Um, how you put your socks, shoes on and even maybe your jeans. So the way I do it is I put on my socks and then my pants and then my boots because I wear long socks because I'm wearing Boots. Work boots. Yes. Uh, apparently, I don't remember which one of the two does which, but one of them puts on both socks and then both shoes, and one of them puts on sock, shoe, sock, shoe, which is complete and total insanity. To me. Sock, shoe, sock, shoe? That is insanity. Sock, shoe, sock, shoe. That is psychopath stuff. Complete insanity. I can't even, I can't even fathom that op- that op- that order. It, I just, it's, it's too much. I can't handle it. Yeah, I... I, I got. So are you sock sock shoe shoe? I'm be, I'm before that even like you put it on before you put your pants on. I put socks put your on. Socks on. Socks are like the first thing I put on. The second thing. No, first thing. Really? Dead serious. Nah, I gotta. gotta I, I have I have reasons though. Okay. Like because you know, I like to work out. I go to the gym regularly uh, when I'm not super busy with race car stuff. Right. So what is possible is that you can. If you don't put socks on first and you have athlete's foot, you could carry that with your underwear up to your junk and get yourself jock itch. So to prevent that, you put your socks on first. All right. It's not, okay. it, you know, it's, it's probably not as big of a common, there's as a problem as a, as I make it sound, but it's just like, okay. I read that in like a, some, some fitness thing or whatever one time. And I was like, you know, that's probably not the worst idea. It's the thing. And it's it's, and not, it just, it's it just, just not worth the risk. It Riley. just, it just stuck with me. I was like, okay, socks first. So then I put, typically it's my right sock first, my left sock first, boxers, jeans, shirt. And then I go right boot, left boot, because I'm not a fucking psychopath. I am left handed. So I'm pretty sure I put my left on first. That's Probably that yeah that I guess it does yeah the order in which you do it makes no difference but if you're putting sock boot sock boot isn't that insane you, you are crazy that's insane <laughs> I can't even <laughs> it's dumb I how do you even, even make it down this I don't know man I don't know so you carry like we'll, we'll just use my house in, as an example a second story in uh-huh. my back back closet I am picking up a pair of socks. I am walking all the way downstairs, down over to my my exit where my boots are. Yeah. I am then putting my sock on, yeah. then a boot on, then a sock, and then a boot. No way. Craziness. Right. No. I'm not leaving my bedroom without my socks on. I don't even make it to the bedroom from the closet. It's, the floor it's- is too cold for that <laughs> shit, Robbie. I don't want my feet to be that cold in the morning. It's a shock to the system. Yeah, man. Plus, there's like I got dog hair all over the place. I want the I want the dog hair on the socks, not in between my feet and the sock. Especially if you just took a shower. Yes. Wait, that's a whole other argument. Right there. I always take a shower in the morning. No, nope. often at night as well. I will never get into a. Like, see, that's that's what that was on my list. Right here. Yeah. Shower before bed or I after mean, we're wake here up. Already. We're here. Shower before bed or after wake up. I will not get into a bed dirty. I won't do it unless I'm at the track. I will shower at night before I get in bed. I rinse off in the shower pretty regularly at night, but I also always take showers in the morning to wake myself up. Like fucking wash the sleep out of my eyes, get my head 
moving. It helps like the warm water helps loosen up my old man muscles, get me moving again. Uh, if I don't shower in the morning, I feel significantly crappier for like multiple hours. No, I'll do. I'll give myself a bit of a whore bath. I'll just like wipe my face in the sink, get the get the get the face clean, get the hair right. You know, there's not a whole lot of hair, so it doesn't really take a lot. Yeah. But no, I shower, sleep, wake up, and then go. Coffee is for waking me up. Shower is for sleep. Depends on what I did that day for me. Fair. I have animals and stuff like that. And we got to change sheets out all the time. Anyway, it doesn't matter. (laughs) So, Uh, yeah, I think the great sock debate will be good on the group this week. Uh, Socks. I just kind of serial killer puts them on with sock, shoe, sock, shoe. That's crazy. It's insanity. (laughs) I didn't even know it was an option. It's never even crossed my mind. It's not an option. It's not an option. (laughs) It's never, never even once thought like, you know what I should do? I should put on my other my boot or my shoe before I put on my other side. So you're standing there barefoot with one and then you got a boot on the other. It's craziness. I mean, I, I put my, before I put my pants on because I like to be able to pull the sock up farther than, up my ankle than, than wearing pants makes it easy to do. I don't feel like dealing with it, yes. but even if I wasn't doing that, like if I was wearing short ankle socks, like no way, man. separately, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> It's either that or you're taking your shoes all through your house. Yeah, I'm not doing that. It's- which I have a pair of shoes I wear in my house pretty regularly because you have I'm cheap in my and so I don't keep my floor that or my house that warm in the winter and my floor is always cold. Oh, I, I, I just have like a crawl space and it's always cold. My floor is always cold in the winter. Oh, I, I understand house slippers. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Except I just wear like an old pair of New Balances. Oh, you wear new. That's- you should wear clean New Balances. No, I just wear a pair I don't wear outside anymore. Oh, that's fair. They've been retired to out to like they're just my my house shoes. See, I got I got a pair that my, of slippers that my mom bought me that uh, they have like fur on the inside and they have like a fish on the outside. That's like like um, that she got at the cabin. So. so it looks like it's eating your foot. No, 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 no. They're like it's, oh, it's got okay. like a it's got like a fish. Like half the fish is on one, and the other half is on the other. It's, like, it's just like oh, okay. It's not like a the whole slipper is not a fish. But oh, I call, okay. But I call them my fish flops. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> is that how we end the show? Fish flops. I think we need to end it on fish flops. I think for we have. Sure. All right, um, we will. I'm going to say it. We will catch you guys next week.